Now, let's backtrack for you a little bit. I want to get you up to speed. This is how it got going as we watch it. Group of bikers surrounding this SUV, and the one biker right there, that's Chris Cruz, slows down in front of that Range Rover, and the driver cannot stop in time. So, bumps him. That escalates things. Now, the SUV after that is stopped, and the driver says he's surrounded. They're beating on his car. They've slashed his tires, so he takes off. And in the midst of that, we know that he runs over at least one of the bikers, Jamie Esses, who was badly hurt. It was a few seconds because everything happened so fast, it happened so quick. And see, the fellow rider underneath, just totally right underneath the, underneath the car, and he kept proceeding on. No, exactly. It did not end there. Finally gets off the freeway, ends up in Washington Heights, and there you see again the gentleman with the helmet who's bashing that driver's side window, pulls the driver out. His name, by the way, Alexi and Lien. Uh, he is recovering. Now, there is his wife, and again, two-year-old little girl uh, with him as well as he's pulled out and beaten and knifed. Now, again, the same cannot be said for the motorcyclists, Edwin or Jay Miesis, uh, the man who was hit by the SUV. There's a picture of him. He is hospitalized. We've heard reports two broken legs and may never walk again. By the way, he's still in a coma. My husband's got off his bike to help the guy. And whatever he did, he got scared. He went peeled off, and he paralyzed my husband on the way. Each piece unfold uh, out in front of us here. Jeff Gold back with us, our one-man justice squad. All right, how you? How could anyone prove? You know, it's a sad situation here that the guy is injured so severely, Jeff. But is he an innocent victim in all this? And how can that be proved? Well, I mean, from what we know, he is an innocent victim. We don't know why he got off the bike. We don't know if his, as what his wife said, if he went off to help or inquire, or he was going to do something else. And I think we'll never know that. I think that he will recover in a civil suit from somebody's insurance, whether it be uh, the drivers or the other motorcyclists or someone. There'll be a deep pocket somewhere, I think. Uh, let's just hope that, uh, that he survives. He's in a drug-induced coma now because he has spinal injuries. I mean, it's a tremendously complicated case. Look, you know, the driver himself, while he did flee the, the, the scene of a, an accident with injury, which could be an issue, look at where that motorcycle was, you know, in the right front you know, passenger side, I'm sure he couldn't see that motorcycle, and all he could see is the people surrounding, maybe tapping his vehicle uh, with a one-year-old in the back seat, he and his wife out for a one-year anniversary drive. You certainly can understand what he did, but it's a complicated situation. Yeah, exactly. And again, how are you going to parse this out to where the driver could face charges? Is it just well, simply what you said, leaving the scene of an accident? He, he left it. Look, it's a, it's a crime in most places to leave the scene of an accident with injury, which is what he did. But where well, the DA will have a, a, a review of this matter and most likely come to the conclusion that, A, he probably couldn't have seen that bike. Now, while he knows he ran over it, did he know he ran over a person? What's his obligation when you run over what you think is just a motorcycle and not a person? He's panicking. I think overall they will not charge him. It might go to a grand jury or such for the grand jury to look at it. But overall, most citizens would say, hey, I do the same thing and get the heck out of Dodge. Mm. Wow. All right. We're going to keep everybody updated, Jeff. Thanks so much. Uh,